Three, two again. Okay, let's capture. And I'm going to go for the same move again. I'm going to check on the queen. Oh, and this time going for an exchange. Fair enough. And touch onto the king bait in the pawn down. Yep. Okay, bring the bishop back. Whole rationale behind baiting is that if they push the pawn forward, and usually it's blocking a key piece that wants to use that square, really. Like the knight really wanted that square. But now it can't, so it's going to have to come inside or go outside to maneuver itself. And also, it loses them that tempo in terms of developing another piece, you know, a proper minor piece or a major piece, even. I'm going to swing round to basically whirlwind onto the bishop. Okay, it's moved out of the way. The knight was protecting it anyway, but again, it's doing things they don't want to do. I think this moment should allow us to actually go and castle. It is a free two, so we have to move a little bit quick. So I'll simply simplify it. I've just taken that off the board, just attacking the knight, x ray through to the bishop. So I'm trying not to overcomplicate things at all. And if we take, then it's going to be on our pawn. So let's develop the knight. They've queenside castled, so the trajectory we can. Let's go here now and then just blunt the bishop. Okay, so it's hitting on thin air basically now, it's just being blunted. So the king's moving now, so he's trying to find stuff to do, but it's. Let's bring the rook. Basic chess. Yep, okay, so we don't have to take, you can bring the king across and support. Simple basic chess. So both looking to try and own the file, but he's got the two bishops here, so in essence, really for me, I don't really want to get the rooks lined up because we're going to have no power on there. Um, so let's take, so he's going to champion the two bishops. Let's just bring this bishop here. And we've got a flexible knight, so how do we want to use this knight? Let's bring it here. You'd think he'd just drop this so that the knight can't go to this square. And okay, let's move the knight up anyway. We do have a safe haven being able to come back here or come back here. So we're looking to get the bishop off the oh bosh bishop off the board. So we've got a fork. King's not close enough to um capture. So we'll be a minor piece up, but it doesn't mean we've won anything. We're actually on the bishop now as we speak, so we can take the bishop off the board. Is there anything better? Let's take, so let's attack this pawn. I'm trying to bring my knight back down as well. So I've got a safe haven coming back here so it's not getting trapped. But if we do go there, his king can come here. It's not close enough really to do any damage to us. So we're going to take. And then look to try and get our king up into the game. Right, so he's looking to trap us. If we hit this pawn and he moves down, it doesn't make any difference. If we hit this pawn and he moves down, again, it still doesn't make any difference. Because his king's going to come across. If it does come across, maybe the knight can jump. All right, let's move the king up. So he's coming for the knight. Let's do a bit of a dance, put a check on. See if we can escape somehow. Can we escape or is it just going to be checks, checks, checks? Um, Put the check on, I think we're going to get trapped. Uh, okay, so let's um, move the king up again. Because if he does come close, we can, I think we can escape, can't we? Yeah, let's move out of the way. Do we escape properly? We're attacking a two. Yeah, so we'll get one of these pawns. So probably just going to put a check. No, okay, let's take. To look at the time now. Okay, let's capture. Uh, get the knight out so I can come back here. Just don't want it getting trapped. And do we want to try and maybe get a pawn up? So if we hit, it's looking for a stalemate area, isn't it? And this pawn's getting promoted. If he drops, then we take. 
Let's push. Let's push. He's not. He's got plenty of space to move, hasn't he yet? Yep. Let's move. Let's just come in here, squish the king a bit. Squish it a bit more. Don't get too fancy, dude. Okay, let's. Oh, they've resigned. Oof, I thought that was a stalemate then for a second. It flashed up that quick. <laughs> okay, right, yeah, so in this particular game here, let's have a look at the analysis. Um, quick, sharpish. I mean, it's a free two, free two game, so it is a bit quick. So just pushing through the centre, basically, again, looking. This was pretty similar to the last game and um, one of the previous games. And they went for the exchange with the queen this time, and we're just looking to cause problems for them. We wanted to bait the pawn down. Again, there'd be no harm with them doing that. We could double the pawns, nothing major. Could go for the exchange of the bishops, which would be probably a little bit better for them, maybe. Um, but they chose to push the pawn down. So, as we mentioned, it's about development of the pieces to try and manage squares around your area and protect your area so when we're doing things like this baiting pawns down um, the idea is that well okay no longer can a minor piece go and manage that square to manage more areas around the board so it would have to work its way this way working managing less pieces on the board in a sense you know so it's like proper probably a key square that you're baiting these pawns into also, it weakens the areas around the back of them as well. So now this pawn is weak. So in essence, this bishop is babysitting this pawn in the longer term type thing. Obviously, it's not babysitting it now. But if it was like the end game type thing and you've baited down pawns, then this bishop would have to babysit this pawn or overextend itself to be defending itself. Then this pawn would be weak. So baiting pawns is a really good idea. And especially if you're wanting to lock down a particular area and um, say like if you've you've got like you've got a really good bishop and you don't want their good bishop to be a good bishop so you'll lock down the pawns so you can bait the pawns down to get into position whereby their bishop is actually fighting against their own pawns you, you will have seen all of these types of situations i've mentioned here in your own games but it's putting a different slant on it in terms of baiting the pawns you know rather than just being reactive if you can manage as best possible there's no guarantee that they're going to actually take the bait you know they could have brought the knight through they could have um, brought the bishop through could have would have should have but we're creating the problem for them to give the answer so what answer are they going to give are they going to fall for the bait then yeah fine we've got the option then of bringing our bishop back and we've developed more pieces than the opponent more major pieces minor pieces Whew. okay so they brought the bishop out and looking to see if there's any major deals because like we said we're not perfect in any way shape or form if it goes beyond the two mark you know either minus two or plus two then there's cause for concern and i will take those sort of things on board the majority of the time it all depends on the circumstance because if I feel my position is still really good, even though the computer's showing it's like minus three or minus four, um, I've got to have the confidence to say, well, yes, I'll do that again because this is why I got that position because the opponent didn't take advantage of that or couldn't take advantage of it because they've got more pieces on the ball, but their position isn't good. So the computer will be thinking, well, the opponent's got loads of pieces, so they should be winning this. But because their position isn't any good, the computer's not really taking that into consideration. It's taking into consideration that you've got a lot more pieces on the board, so realistically, you should not be losing, no matter what your position's like. So we castled, and we, we captured. Okay, so neither here nor there, all the way through this section here, so that's really quite interesting. Yeah, nothing devastating. Capturing, nice and simple, small tiny advantage to black, it's jumping back again to us, then it's jumping back to black. 
going for drawish type sort of situation so nothing major happening and as we said we just wanted to get the rooks off the board the bishops are managing these squares quite nicely you see you know all around here so doubling the rooks up really i'd be wasting my time because i'm not going to get any benefit from that so simply capturing the rooks makes me makes sense to me and let's get them off the board now what i was talking about earlier with the baiting of the pawns and blocking the bishops off you know see how the bishops are blocked yeah the bishops are blocked they don't really have major play in the game so they're going to have to make some type of pawn break type thing we have a flexible knight that potentially can weave its way through these blocked pawn areas so that's what i was talking about earlier if i was talking a little bit too fast or didn't understand what i was talking about so now we're bringing our um, good bishop into uh, a nice position and now we can use the flexible knight again did think that they were probably going to push this pawn to stop our knight from jumping here because i thought this is a crucial square really and then the major out of all of the rest oh, all of this game, I mean, it's been even Stevens all the way through. There's been no major impacts on anything. The opponents played quite nicely and um, positionally, well, being able to maintain material on the board. So it's still showing as like being equal. And again, this goes to what I was talking about earlier about, well, the computer thinks, well, you know, you've got your two bishops, you know, you've got a king, everything's equal. So really, it should be a draw, you know, um, not point one is not a... Uh, that's nothing um, so it should be a draw right but the placement of the pieces allows us to then take advantage of major weaknesses in their position so that one move then has you know set the snowball rolling for us finding better position on the board being able to take off their blocked bishop you know and take off their other blocked bishop really because it had nowhere to go and now we've got the flexible knight that can dance around the board we had the panic thinking is the knight getting trapped or not nothing worse than getting it trapped by a king but because it's got so much space it can jump around a bit it, it probably was looking for a draw but i'm thinking i don't think it's a draw we can get to the other side of the board and then start wreaking some havoc So the whole, whole, all about this particular game is really about finding those key areas. As we saw in the game, it was basically equal all the way through. But in my mind's eye, because we done like a very basic thing of blocking down the power of the of the bishops, so it's basically you trying to utilize your strengths against their weaknesses and knowing what the strengths are of the pieces such as the bishops like the diagonals and the position of our pawns prevented the bishops from actually gaining into the game so understanding how to work that system from the get-go right from the start it gives a, a valid reason as to why you're making your moves in jest so at this point then the opponent resigned i did have a panic thinking oh no did i stalemate it <laughs> um but yeah so yeah in real terms just really have a look at what you're doing on the board and, and see whether or not you're actually working for the opponent or you're making the opponent work for you